What's the deal, YouTube? It's your girl, Miss Honey. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, you guys. Welcome back. It's Monday. We're off to the races, the top of the week, you guys. All right, you already know what this is. This is The Walking Dead. This is season eight. We are one episode away from the mid-season finale, so we still have one more episode in this half of the season and then we're going to go on a small hiatus and we'll be back after next sunday we will go on a small hiatus and then we'll be back with the rest of the season you guys um this episode was more of the same you know introspection type episode we had some action and you know, The Walking Dead, as it tries to sort of tie up all the loose ends that are going to be left from the comic and, and, you know, all of these other commentaries that are out there, they're trying to tie up this show because it's coming to an end. I don't know if this is the last season or if we're going to have one more season, but some of the things that they're doing, you know, it, it's obvious to me. I'm not gonna pick at those things because, you know, it, it's just how things are done so that things can seem a little bit more excited or exciting. And I feel like the more I pick at things, the more frustrated I get. And you know, you guys have seen how frustrated I get with this show, okay? because I didn't understand why Rosita didn't just take that rocket launcher and they go over there to Negan's camp and run that rocket launcher through the side of the building. Seemed like to me it would have been a lot easier than driving the truck through and trying to come up with all of this harebrained scheme. But again, I'm not gonna pick at that scab because I already know logically it's all done to make the show longer and appear more exciting. So let's just talk about it real quick. First and foremost, we don't get to see King Ezekiel, Carol. We don't get to see Carl and Sadiq. Uh, we do get to see Morgan now for the first time since he had that fight with White Jesus and essentially had his ass handed to him and stormed off mad. We get to see that he's somewhere perched in a building, a part of the sniper crew, you know, this sniper crew, and we see Rosita, I think her name is Tara, and Michonne, and uh, Daryl, they've gone over to see the Negan's camp. They are working out a plan now with Morgan's help where they are going to go in. They've decided they're going to go in. Rosita is not down for it. Again, she's been wounded and since she was the catalyst that got Sasha killed, she's a little bit more apprehensive about going in and have cop, which I was glad to see. But again, because she's been half cocked so long, her conversation about why they should not be doing this carries no weight. She ends up going walking on back. Michonne gets to the door of the fight and tells Daryl that it's not worth it. It's going to go south. And she walks and goes back. Now, Rosita has walked on back instead of Michonne speaking up at that time and they going back together. Oh, no, no, no. We got Rosita out there walking, trying to head back to uh, Rick's camp. Now we got Michonne out there walking, trying to head back to Rick's camp. And Daryl has got his mind set on things. But one of the reasons why I ride out for Daryl is because Daryl, I think, still replays the death of Glenn and the other dude in his head. I don't think he forgets. And some of the other moves that the people are making on this show, the ones that were there when that whole horrible tragedy happened, I think they have forgotten, in my opinion. 
because when you have something like that in the forefront of your mind it governs your every step you know whether you scared or you brave it governs your every step when it's not on your mind you can easily go off and be doing your own thing you know what i'm saying like carl like really i don't know anyway we find out that gabriel is sick from the guts that he put all over and it's un uh, it's not a cold it's something more serious he got something viral going on and you know even with him being sick and down in the body and just you know having this viral infection which is you know causes you to be feverish and in, in, in a, a modicum of pain and that type of thing he's still thinking about the group he's still thinking about the cause he's still thinking about the fight he wants to talk people into helping him get the one doctor that they have back to the hilltop so that Maggie um, can have a doctor there when she eventually has the baby. Well, it looked like Maggie got a baby to me because she ain't showing that she got baby Gracie that she holding near and dear to her heart. So, um, while on one hand it's noble, okay anyway um we get to see a lot of eugene through this whole episode and when i tell y'all eugene get on my nerves he's the answer to the question and nobody is asking he will give you 20 words when one word will do okay all of that i mean you really could drop him over there with the garbage pail kids and he would be able to talk to them just fine i promise you because they all have that really choppy way of talking and the only difference between Eugene and the Garbage Pail people is the Garbage Pail people don't talk half as much as Eugene does. So anyway, you know, he's got Dwight trying to talk him into joining the fight, you know, on Rick's side. He's got Gabriel trying to get him to help, to help to save the doctor for Maggie's sake. He's got Negan in his ear trying to make sure that he's thinking every day about a plot or a scheme to get them out of this whole subterfuge they are in with the walkers. Because remember, the walkers are all around them. And it, it is kind of surreal and scary to hear the walkers, you know, scratching at the windows and the doors. And they've guesstimated it's going to take about two days before the walkers wear the... Wear the um, infrastructure now and eventually get into the building what i think is so odd is that no one's really trying to actively work to get them out of the situation outside of eugene eugene seems like he is really really trying to get them out of the situation uh to me dwight dwight is depending on daryl to comfort him and he and the other people that are innocent there who are the workers at Negan's camp are going to be saved. But he's not actively trying to, to um, you know, find a way out of there in case Daryl is dead somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Like he is just going on the word that he got from Daryl. But where is Simon? We don't see Simon this episode. Is Simon working on an answer on getting y'all out of there? Negan, to me, look like he might be part walker. He's standing there talking to Eugene. And you know, he always got Lucille. And he always got one shoulder up and lean to the side. That's how the walkers walk. I'm like, is this thing? <sighs> Sorry. Anyway. So, it's a lot of quiet conversation with Eugene. He agreed to work on this boom box for one of the... One of the women that Negan is married to you know all the wives his wives and he done worked out a situation where she fix, he fixed the boom box for the girl and the girl get him a bottle of wine a bottle of wine when he started when he finished fixing the boom box where they can have a little music she'll give him the other bottle of wine well he begs for the bottle of wine anyway because he taking a little sip every night to help him go to sleep alright so your conscience rarely ever sleeps Eugene 
that's the thing that's why it doesn't work that's why self-medicating doesn't work because it's not your physical mind that's that's doing all the thinking it's your unconscious mind that's worrying you to death okay just fyi since you so intelligent since you the smartest thing walking right now anyway he goes from extreme highs to extreme lows you know he tries to build this sort of uh what do you call that thing that people be flying over your property the drone um to lead the walkers away with a with a boom box on it you know with a little 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 microphone on it trying to lead the walkers away dwight shoot it down at the sky because you're not finna lead the walkers away we waiting on there we're gonna all go together when daryl get here no what you better be doing is trying to work you and whoever else you want to save and try to get them out of that building because if daryl don't come you're gonna die there anyway daryl comes he drives the truck through the side of the building now it's just him these other imaginary snipers and morgan sniping and uh tara on the ground with a gun and he puts a brick on the accelerator drives the truck through of course the walkers flood through the whole bottom half of negan's building is now full of walkers okay now full of walkers they just having conversation they're like yeah the walkers are on the steps the whole downstairs is down and negan is like okay eugene what you gonna do how you gonna help help us i'm like really is this this how y'all work out problems? This is how we, we do issue a problem resolution around there? I don't know, it's weird, it's odd. It just kinda seems like we all standing around waiting for shit to happen. Meanwhile, Rick, this how the episode opened. It's still in the hot box over at the Garbage Pail Kids. All right, they pull him out and after she done took a picture of his his naked body he ain't naked naked but that's how she wanted she wanted to do a little metal sculpture of him and uh she takes a picture of his front and his back puts him back in the hot box when she does bring him back she keeps talking about the after the after evidently they're gonna make him they new pet walker so they bring one of the pet walkers one of the ones he fought when he first met them and um they got him with a stick while they guiding him he blindfolded but they got his mouth out and he you know he just looks scary and very frankenstein-ish and you know it's all just supposed to be terrifying rick is standing there naked he gets close enough to the walker guy to um now take over the walker he's yielding the walker and the stick that's holding the helmet on the walker's head as a weapon he takes out all of her guys even though his hands is tied he uses the stick and the walker to subdue them jadis watches the whole situation go down and then towards the end she pulls out a gun and tries to shoot rick which rick takes the gun from her He's pulled the walker's head off of its body. The head is still snapping. Ah, 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 ah. He puts Jada's face right to the walker's face, you know, and makes her, you know, I guess, cry uncle, mercy. When he gets her up, he has the gun. He lets them all know they can't speak good English, but they obviously can understand English. And um, lets her know this is going to happen. And we might not come back today, but my people gonna come back and we gonna get in here and we gonna end y'all. So y'all can either help us and spare y'all selves to that or we, or, or I can send my, I'm leaving out of here now. I want my boots and my clothes and all that. I'm leaving out of here. Either you're gonna cooperate and work with us or we gonna end you. All right. Now he's doing all of that talking because he feel like Michonne and knows know where I am. Uh, Carolyn knows know where I am. I've sent them. I've sent them a pigeon, carry a pigeon with all the information on it. They know where I be, and and uh, you know we're gonna we're gonna come back. But all your people is scattered to the four corners of the other other um countryside. You know what I'm saying? All your people off doing whatever the hell it is they want to do, Rick. So while you busy trying to talk a good game about what's going on with with um with Jadis and what you gonna do and how you gonna do it, um, 
you gon' you don't even know where your people at. You just talking. Anyway, they get into this little thing that they did before when we first were introducing where they haggle. You know, 5%, 2%, 3%, 9%. Plus, I get my clothes and you pose for me naked and gonna do this. You know, I was just like, why are you negotiating with these snakes? Like, I don't even get it, you guys. Like, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Anyway, I guess he gonna get out of there. You know, he gets out of there. And by the time he makes it back to Negan's camp, now he got all Jada's people with him. They all locked and loaded, ready to go. He see there's a couple of walkers and there's somebody there hanging down. I guess that was some not somebody that was significant to the show. And he's cut them all down. He's killed all the walkers that was eating on this body that was hanging down off the pole. He gets up, up to the, up, you know, on this, on this tower from where the person was hanging down. He gets up to the tower and he looks and he can see over into Negan's camp and over into Negan's camp is um, just the empty courtyard. It was full of walkers, no walkers now. He can see where the truck was running to the side and obviously all the walkers pulled inside but now are they all inside the building did they go out the back side where your people at rick where where is everybody where's the snipers that were waiting where is morgan where is everyone and this is supposed to lead up to next sunday which is supposed to be the mid-season finale and then we're going to see carol hopefully ezekiel this will be probably one of our last times seeing Morgan because we know he's crossover. He's going to go over to Fear of Walking Dead, which I don't watch Fear of the Walking Dead. My nerves bad enough with the regular Walking Dead. I can't deal with these with hard-headed people uh, prior to all of this apocalyptic stuff happening. Anyway, um, so next week is supposed to be a real nail-biter, you guys. I personally don't see it i don't see it i i know we're probably going to try to bring everybody together right now everybody seems like they're splintered uh we go off to fight what are we going to do with these saviors that we have captive here um are we going to trust some of them to fight with us like to me off the rip any immediate threats you guys should have eliminated you should have eliminated old dude that killed young boy that morgan was training the one that morgan wanted to kill from rip y'all should have eliminated him he's a he's he's gonna end up stabbing y'all in the back one way or another um and i think it was a mistake for rick to go over and spend all of that time at with the garbage pail kids that's just my opinion i think he would have been better served going back to his camp making sure everybody knows this is the plan that we're going to be working on um for him to let uh daryl go off the way that daryl did and not say listen we let's commit to rendezvous back here at yada yada time you don't you you don't know what's going on because you let Daryl go on his way and you knew what Daryl's mindset was. So now you coming back with the garbage pail kids like you ready to fight, right? I mean, you just you you left the pot. You left the pot. It has not only boiled over, but it's completely dry and the house full of smoke. Like where you been, Rick? What is you doing? I don't know. I don't know. Y'all put it down below. Y'all tell me what y'all think. This is my feelings on The Walking Dead right now. I just, I'm just. All of that talk with Eugene going back and forth, back and forth. And I can see them kind of trying to make Eugene the hero of this season. I feel it coming. I feel it coming. Because at the very least, Eugene should have been mollywopped. He should have been bust upside the head. Somebody should have punched him in the gut by now. Like, he's infuriating. And they're pulling him in this place where he's, I'm, I'm with it, but I'm not. He, he knows that Dwight has got this conspiracy going. He knows that Gabriel's ultimate, but he's not sharing it with Negan. So it's a part of him that won't rig them to win, but he's so scared of Negan that he's not going to leave Negan's side. I said, I'm telling you now, they are posing, they are uh, positioning Eugene to be the savior of this episode. It's going to get down to the wire and it's going to be Eugene that makes this heroic 
effort and everybody's gonna be like oh okay eugene was on our side i will never trust eugene never trust eugene when he bust back there in the gabriel's sick bed and had a full-on argument with gabriel um trying to convince himself more than anybody that he was negan and he was not gonna sacrifice his position with negan for nothing i knew then i was like i ain't gonna never like eugene i don't care what they do but anyway you guys that's what i that's what i saw on this episode if i forgot anything put it down below um thank you so much guys for tuning in remember to give me a thumbs up comment down below subscribe if you are not already a subscriber and share my videos until next time honeybees mwah, mwah, mwah. Ah.